Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel and today we are going to start off on a brand new playlist which is on performance testing with Tracentis Neoload. So Neoload was recently acquired by Tracentis and it is a performance testing tool which can be run on web or on a desktop application. So we are going to look at different features of Tracentis Neoload, how you can set it up, how you can use it to test your uh, applications, especially on the performance testing types. Before we move on to this particular tool, first let's understand what even is performance testing. So performance testing in simple terms is used to measure how a system can perform under a specific workload. And what do we mean by this workload? So this workload is nothing but the number of users who are trying to access a particular system at a particular time from different locations. So this could be parallel users trying to access the system or concurrent users trying to access the system at the same time. So the workload could be different, right? And you have to measure the performance during all these different times with different parameters. Then the next question comes, why performance testing is even important? Okay, what is the benefit of doing performance testing? So although there are many benefits of performance testing, I have listed down four of the most common and most important benefits of doing performance testing. First of all, it will provide you with improved user experience for your system. And how it will do that is you can test the performance of your application beforehand so that before you release any particular feature or before you re even release your application, you can test how the user experience is under different workloads. And you can improve the performance of the application before it goes to the users, and then the users will have a better experience. And your performance will have better reviews from your customers, and it will also have an edge over its competitors. The next point is improved scalability. And what do you mean by this is you can improve the scalability of your application, which means you can either increase the resources of the application whenever required, or you can decrease the resources when you don't require that many resources, okay? Um, and this uh, particular point can be elaborated with an example where um, the use of the application increases drastically during certain periods of time, okay? And you need to be able to increase the resources of the application so that it performs the same way as it was performing under less workload. So to give an example, uh, if you know about Amazon Big Billion Days, right? So this uh, is offered by Amazon on certain occasions where it gives different offers on its products. And you will see that uh, during this time, lot of customers do access the application, right? So there is increased workload and Amazon needs to be ready for this particular workload, which could be very dynamic. And it could be also very huge depending on the particular uh, offers which is uh, offering. And uh, it could happen in any part of its application, right? So it needs to be prepared for this. And the only way it can do is to test the performance of the application under this increased workload. So basically they will do some stress testing Okay, so they will test up to the maximum level of workload which this particular application can handle. And they will also prepare themselves or the application to handle that particular workload, okay, which they are expecting during this big billion days. So they have to take care of the scalability of the resources which is used by this particular application. The next two points are related to productivity and cost savings. Okay, so you will have increased productivity of uh, your team also for the application as all the performance issues can be identified during this testing period and they could be fixed by the development team. So this way, the company will uh, do a lot of cost savings because they don't have to then uh, fix those production bugs which may come after the release. 
So a lot of savings could be done on the development and also on the maintenance and testing side. So now that you have got an idea why performance testing is important, let's try and understand what is the process of performance testing. How do we do performance testing? Okay. So there are basically five steps to do performance testing. First, we need to identify the test environment. Okay, and this could uh, basically mean identifying our hardware, our software, uh, our network, and the other tools which will be used for this performance testing. Then we will identify the performance metrics. Okay, so these are basically performance requirements which are provided uh, either by the business analyst or by the clients to the testing team so that uh, the performance benchmark can be set for that particular system. And then uh, the testing will be done against that particular benchmark, okay? If the application is not performing up to the benchmark, then uh, this needs to be reported to the development team. Okay, after that, the third step is to plan and design performance tests, okay? And this will be done using a particular automation tool like Neoload. So here we'll prepare the scenarios, we will do the user simulation, and we will also test against the performance metrics. Okay, the next two steps are execution and result analysis. This will be also done using the automation tool. So we'll execute and monitor the tests and we'll also analyze the metrics and debug issues. And then we can also do some um, rerun of those particular tests. Okay, so these are basically the five steps which you follow to do performance testing. No matter what automation tool you use, or even if you are doing it manually using um, some ways of performance testing, you need to follow these five steps. Now talking about the real-time performance issues, right? So I've already given an example of the Amazon big billion days, right? there is a big possibility that uh, Amazon might experience an issue uh, during these kind of periods where a lot of users will be going to access that particular application. But Amazon don't have these issues because they are a pretty established company and they would have done a lot of performance testing and their application is pretty robust, right? But not every application is up to that level, okay? so every application needs to do some performance testing to identify these performance issues which could happen at any point of time, okay? And these are basically uh, two examples or two scenarios which are pretty common for every other application, okay? Uh, generally, when there is a product launch or a new product is being launched or some new features are being introduced in an application, this is the time uh, when you actually experience performance issues, okay? One of the recent uh, application which I can think of is uh, the application which was launched by uh, Aryan Khan, okay? Uh, for uh, the new product that they were going to launch and on the product launch day, uh, the company uh, notified the users that they were uh, experiencing some issues in their application due to the high number of users logging in into their application and it was not able to handle that particular load. So these kind of issues are pretty common during a product launch because um, the company may not have uh, done some that level of performance testing. It did not expect that these many users will be logging into the application and they were not prepared for that, okay? Uh, the other uh, example, which I told already during the sale periods uh, when the user load is pretty high, okay? Which is not uh, generally the case when uh, in normal periods. So the applications are not really ready for this kind of user load. And then uh, it generally breaks down, okay? If it is not able to handle that particular user load. So these are some of the real-time performance issues which happen for different applications, no matter if it's a mobile application, a desktop application, or even a web application. Right? But generally it is mostly performance issues are related to uh, web and mobile application because of the number of users trying to access that particular application.
then coming to the types of performance testing. Okay, so there are different types of performance testing, but these are the five most common um, and the most used uh, types during performance testing. The first is load testing. So this is used to measure the system performance under normal workload, okay? So this doesn't measure any additional workload on the system, it is normal workload. So you will simulate the normal number of users and then you will test your system, okay? If it is uh, working as per the expected uh, benchmarks set by the clients or the business analyst. The next is test testing. Now this is where uh, you test your uh, system under extreme workload, okay? So you take the workload to the maximum and then you test your system, how it's performance. Is it up to the benchmarks or is it not? The next step is endurance testing. So this uh, is to measure the system performance under normal workload, but the time period is a uh, little bit more than the normal time period. Okay, so it is an extended period of time for which this testing is performed, but the workload is still normal. So this is called endurance testing. Then there is scalability testing, we talked about it. So we measure if the system can handle increased user workloads, okay? So whether the system is able to scale up to that particular workload so that it can handle it. And then finally, uh, we have got volume testing. Now this is to uh, measure the performance of the system under varying database volumes. Okay, so if the application is using a database as its backend, which most of the applications use, okay? So in this type of testing, we'll basically increase the database volume and then test the system performance. So these are the five types of performance testing. As I said, there are a lots more types of performance testing, but these are the most common ones which are used. Now coming to uh, different testing tools which are available in market and which are also very famous. One of the uh, oldest performance testing tool is Load Runner. If you uh, would have heard, obviously uh, a new company has overtaken. Previously it was owned by HP, but now uh, it is owned by Microfocus. Um, it is a pretty established tool, but obviously it has got a huge license cost. And then there is Apache JMeter, which is a open source tool, but it doesn't have the features uh, which are required for end-to-end -end performance testing. Obviously you can do some level of performance testing, but analyzing the results uh, or maybe uh, performing the same kind of user workload, which is used in production systems may not be suitable uh, for JMeter, okay? So for small applications, you can still use JMeter if you want to use open source uh, tool. Then there are enterprise tools like WebLoad, CloudTest, uh, then there is Load Ninja, and there are hundreds of other tools uh, in the market which are available. But you need to uh, make a decision based on your use case and also based on the pricing of the tool, okay? Uh, in this particular, Playlist, we are going to focus on Neoload. It is an offering by Tricentis, which is now becoming very popular in terms of automation tools. Uh, we have already seen uh, Tosca, which is a test automation tool, and then the Neoload, which was recently acquired by Tricentis for performance testing. And they are uh, offering a lot of different features, which we will see in this particular playlist. So that's all a brief idea about performance testing, what it is, uh, why it is beneficial, uh, what are the different tools available in the market, okay, and what are the different types of performance testing. Now, in the coming up lessons, I'm going to show you how you can set up Tricentis new load on your system, and you can start using new load to basically test uh, your systems for performance testing. So do tune into our channel. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, please do subscribe so that you get notified about my next video on performance testing or any other types of testing tools which you are trying to learn. So hopefully you enjoyed this particular video. Uh, do tune into our channel to watch the next video coming up pretty soon. Until then, 
have a nice day and goodbye